Well, it's been quite a decade for the U.S. market stocks, finishing 2019 on a huge upswing with all of the major indexes near record highs. And over the past 10 years, the S&P 500 up nearly fivefold since the market bottom in 2009. Well, joining us now with his predictions for 2020 is Ted Oakley. He's the managing partner of Oxbow Advisors. And Ted, when you take a look at the market's extremely strong performance over the last 10 years, where are, your place, where are you placing your bets when it comes to 2020? Well, for 2020, uh, you know, what we're doing right now is we're looking at companies we think can go ahead and increase their earnings this year. We, we like companies that can grow earnings over the next three to five years, but uh, we've got a lot of liquidity right now. If you look at the price multiples on things, it's really very high. You had a lot of chasing going into year end. And so we think we'll have a little better entry point. But having said that, you know, we like companies that uh, will give you a push. We think healthcare will be okay. We think energy will probably surprise people this year with the dollar falling. So, uh, so those are the things we're really concentrating on right now. Ted, when you drill down here, trying to identify some of the healthcare names that are positioned to outperform, are some well, better positioned than others in the space? Well, they are, but in, a, in one sense, you know, you like to cover the whole spectrum. And for us, that includes uh, the drug makers, the Johnson Johnsons of the world. In addition, uh, the, the healthcare providers, United Health, so that sort of thing. And we also try to even go towards senior housing because, see, this is all a demographic trend. And so we have a kind of a mixture of all of those things. So one of the things that uh, the market, the major thing that the market was pretty much able to shake off in 2019 was all this geopolitical uncertainty. And the headline there was the latest between the U.S. and China when it comes to trade. We have President Trump tweeting out this morning that the phase one deal will be signed on January 15th. Do you expect that to add any momentum to the market or has that mostly been uh, priced in at this point? You know, Shauna, I would suspect that that's all in the price. I mean, we've had so many months of it, you know, to finally get down to the happening. Uh, I don't think it will have much of an impact. And it's not a, it's not one of those things that really includes a lot of meat in this thing. It's a sort of a, a window dressing sort of thing for both countries, I think. But we'll, you know, we'll see. But I doubt if it has much impact. Well, then on the other hand, could these, some of these geopolitical issues cap some of the gains that we could see in 2020? Well, I think they will, because I think you've had so many people chase the markets in the year end that what you'll have is people taking profits. And we have a, a number we're using, though, for a fourth quarter GDP that is probably not as strong as everybody expects. I mean, everybody keeps talking 2 percent, 2 percent. We don't think we even get close to that. And if that happens, that's going to put a damper on the first month or two of the new year. Yeah, that's what I, I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, do you think that we've seen this rally, if we don't get that 2% growth, how big of a pullback could we see in the markets? Well, it's hard to say on the number except, uh, Shauna, but I, my guess is what happens is you pull your multiples back to a number that is really coincident with what they can actually make, these companies can make in 2020. Their margins are going to be contracting. We know that already. Labor costs going up, margins going down, which tells us that it wouldn't be surprising any time during the year to have, and particularly in the first part of the year, to have a 15 or 20 percent pullback just because you get back to the norm. Ted, what are your thoughts on just in terms of what we should expect from earnings season? Because it was if you look at it, really, the overall picture in 2019 it was a bit of a disappointment. Do you expect that to continue next year? Well, I think it continues for the first half and maybe the whole year, because if you look at it, OK, now what you have happening is you, you've got a change in the guard, so to speak. We have more companies overseas that are doing better. And over here, these companies are really stretched in terms of what they're doing. And I think uh, they continue to be able to show some numbers because they could move some things around. I don't think they get the same benefit in the first and second quarter of next year. All right, Ted Oakley, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks, Shauna.